Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to applying inventory cost flows when you buy your inventory in bulk purchases. Now, before I get into the cost flows themselves, let's just talk about what do I mean when I say a bulk purchase? Well, bulk purchases are simply when you buy a large number of units of inventory at the same time for the same price. So in other words, instead of buying one unit at $100, and then later you buy one unit at $200, you're going to buy, say, um, 400 units at $1. And then later you're going to buy, say, 600 units at $2, and so forth and so on. So that's what we mean by bulk purchases. Now, why does this matter in terms of cost flows? Well, remember, um, when, when a company does cost flows, they are basically choosing a method by which to establish what inventory did they sell? And so they're going to have to figure out which pieces of the bulk purchases actually left, got sold, and should be factored into cost of goods sold, versus which pieces are left behind and therefore part of the ending inventory that will go on the balance sheet. So let's take a look at this in action a little bit. Um, here I give you an example. Tiger Electronics recorded the following information related to inventory during the year. I give you a beginning inventory how many units and its value. I give you three bulk purchases and their value. And then I tell you at the end that the company sold 450 units of inventory for $15 each. All right, so the first step you're going to do when you see a problem like this that has bulk purchases, notice I didn't ask you to solve anything here, and I'm not giving you enough information to go through and, and, and solve a bunch of stuff. This is more just a demonstration. Um, Typically, you're given this information because you're trying to figure out the cost flows of the company. How much should be put to cost of goods sold? How much should be put as the inventory balance on the balance sheet? Whenever you approach something like that, the first thing you want to figure out is, well, what was the total cost of each of my batches? What was my total cost overall for all of this inventory? And so we can go through this methodically, and we can say, well, that beginning inventory was 100 units. And those units were $10 each. Therefore, that first batch, that beginning inventory, that had a cost of $1,000. That's what we as a company paid for it. We can do the same to the three subsequent purchases. We purchased 200 units of inventory at $11 each. That has a cost of $2,200. We purchased 300, 300 units of inventory at $1,200, uh, $12 each. So 300 times 12 comes out to 3,600. We purchased 400 units of inventory at $13 each. That comes out to 5,200. And we can figure out that now that we've taken care of what did we start with that we bought previously, but it was still in our inventory, plus what is all the new stuff we bought? So the beginning inventory balance plus the cost of goods purchased gives us what's known as the cost of goods available for sale, which we can just add all of these up, 5,200 plus 3,600 plus 2,200 plus that last thousand puts us at a total of $12,000. All right. Now, our next piece of information was what did we sell? And it says that we sold 450 units of inventory for $15 each. So if I go 450 times 15, that comes out to 6750 and I'm going to put that off to the side by itself here because that is not a cost to the company. That is the price we charge the customers for these 450 units. That is our sales revenue that's going to go on our income statement. Now, of course, on our income statement, we're also going to have to list the cost of sales or cost of goods sold, and therefore investors can calculate the gross profit on these 450 units. Here's where the cost flows come in. Because the question then becomes, well, what was the cost of goods sold? What was the cost of these 450 units when you had 100 here, 200 here, 300 here, 400 here, and they were all at different prices? Well, under, say, a specific identification system, you're going to know exactly which of the units here were part of that 450. And you're going to know exactly what price each of those units had associated with it, or what cost each of those units had associated with it. So under specific identification, you're going to be able to basically use your system to figure out exactly to the penny what was the actual cost, what was the price we paid to buy this inventory before we resold it to our customers. 
Now, I didn't give you enough information for that, and to calculate 450 calculations would be obnoxious. So, I'm not going to demonstrate that any further, just talk about it conceptually. Your other choices are your FIFO, LIFO, and your average cost. These are all cost flow assumptions. These don't track the specific units of inventory. What these do is make an assumption about how the inventory is flowing through your system. FIFO being you assume the earlier inventory sold first, LIFO being you assume the later inventory sold first, and in average cost, you assume all inventory carries the same weighted cost based on the total that you paid for all of it. So let's walk through how that would look like in this particular situation where we sold 450 units of inventory. Under FIFO, again, you assume first in, first out. The earlier stuff you bought is the stuff you sold. That means that very first batch, 100 units at $10 each, we sold that. That's 100 units right there. The earliest thing we had, it was already in our beginning inventory. That next batch of purchases, 200 units at $11 each, we sold that. We sold the whole balance because remember, we sold 450. Well, that's 100 of the 450. There's 200 of the 450. We're only up to 300 units so far. So we sold that. But we only have 150 units to go. So chronologically, the next batch in our list is this one right here. But we didn't sell that whole batch, did we? We didn't sell 300 more units. We only sold 150 of that batch. And so the next step in FIFO would be 150 units times the price of that batch, $12 each. 150 times 12, that works out to $1,800. And there you have it. 100 units, 300 units, 450 units, their associated cost, we're pulling everything from the beginning we add all that together, and that is going to come out to plus 2200 plus 1000 looks like $5,000. So that is cost of goods sold under a FIFO system in a bulk purchase situation. Now, what about LIFO? Well, remember, we're just going the opposite direction in LIFO. Whatever we bought last is what we assume sold first. So that means this last batch, 400 units, $13 each, that's gone. $5,200, the entire batch is gone. Now we only need 50 more units. And so we move to the next most recent batch, which is this 300 units. We're only gonna pull 50 of those, once again at $12 each. Oop, lost track of my calculator there. 50 times 12 for $600. And we're done, right? 400 units here, 50 units here. That's our entire 450. We add that together. We get a cost of goods sold of $5,800 under a LIFO system. Now, what about average cost? Well, average cost is a little bit different because we're not going to pull from one direction or the other under an average cost. We're going to calculate what was the average price we paid for all units, and we're going to treat them all equally. So in this case, we know we paid a total of $12,000. We know that we have a total of 100, 300, 600, 1,000 units that we bought. And therefore, on average, we paid $12 per unit. So under an average cost system, it's not about pulling from one side or the other. It's about simply saying, we sold 450 units at $12 each. Or $5,400. Now, a couple of interesting things to point out here. First of all, um, Notice that all the cogs are different, and all of those cogs are going to be different than if we had done specific identification. Specific identification is the most accurate, okay? 
All of these are assumptions, which means all of these have their own inaccuracies. One of them may be closer to specific identification than another. We don't have enough information in this problem to know. Also notice that FIFO and LIFO are at opposite ends of the spectrum with this, with average cost falling between them, 5,000, 5,400, 5,800. Average cost will always fall between FIFO and LIFO because average cost, by taking all the prices and just kind of meshing them together, it, it creates a smoothing effect. So you don't get extreme swings. You're just kind of always in the middle, okay? And we could take our sales revenue of 6750 and we could subtract any one of these COGS, depending on which method the company is using, and that would tell us the gross profit of the company. Now, you may be saying, well, what about this stuff? All these empty places, right? What about what was left here or what was left here? That's the ending inventory that you still have on hand. And the value of that ending inventory is going to go on your balance sheet. And the interesting thing is this. All you have to do, you don't have to go through another calculation of units and price and all that. All you have to do is say, well, we know that we had a total cost of 12000 And if we sold 5000 of it, then 7000 of it must be left. There's your ending inventory. Just take the difference. We know we had 12000 If we sold 5800 then we know 6200 must be left. We had 12000 in cost. If we sold 54 of that, then we know that 66 of that must be left, right? So you, if you figure out cost of goods sold, it's a piece of cake to then figure out ending inventory because it's just whatever's left, whatever portion of total cost that did not yet flow out of your system. All right, that was applying cost flows to bulk purchase scenarios. So um, it's complicated, it takes some practice, but once you kind of get in a rhythm with it, it really isn't that difficult. Um, you just kind of got to practice it quite a bit, um, and, then, and then you can kind of become a pro at it. With that said, hopefully you found this helpful, and I hope you join me for another video.